Welcome back everyone. I wanted to go ahead and kind of break down the 6s plus 7 plus an iPhone 8 plus and see how they kind of hold up in 2022. Now I've already done separate comparisons between these two phones, these two phones, and these two phones and I will definitely tell you they're really, I mean each one of these phones were very very interesting of their time and they all brought something very interesting. I mean with the iPhone 6s plus stemming back in 2015 when this device came out, this was the last iPhone to not only have the standard older design that we had before but it was also the last plus iphone with a single camera setup it was the last one of the last iphones in general to have a headphone jack as well which was really cool and it was one of the last iphones to have this specific back you know it wasn't the aluminum back but they removed the antenna lines here moved them to the bottom as you can see on the 7 plus and this was honestly and this was also one of the last non-ip certified iphones as well so this was a really really impactful iphone in terms of a body standpoint but there were a lot of differences in the internals as well, which I'll get into in a second. The 7 Plus came out in 2016. Now this device, if you remember, brought a lot of controversy with it. First of all, it brought the lack of a headphone jack, which a lot of people still to this day talk about, and it was originated with this device. On top of that, we brought IP certification with this iPhone, which is really cool. So before with the 6S Plus and iPhones before it, there was no IP certification. With the 7 Plus, they actually ended up having it, which is really cool. It also brought a dual camera setup this time around as well. So with the 7 Plus and the 6S Plus, at least from there, the camera setup standpoint, this was one of the biggest upgrades, I think, from a camera from one iPhone to the other, probably since the iPhone 11 Pro after that. So this was a really cool thing. It also brought one of the biggest size batteries of any iPhone of this time. The home button was a little bit different. It brought an extra gigabyte of RAM in this version as well. And you know, it did bring a little bit of a different back. The antenna bands were kind of stretched out to the bottom of this device. And it also brought a jet black color of this iPhone, which I loved a lot. So when I look at this iPhone, still a very interesting device. And then we came in 2017, which the iPhone 8 Plus came out in. Now there were a lot of differences with this specific phone. You can see my back is cracked on this thing because this thing actually had a back glass plate on it. So all the previous iPhones before this, since I think the iPhone 5, all had this aluminum back on it. Some had like little glass parts on the top and bottom, but the iPhone 8 Plus brought back that glass back which was so cool back in 2017 and it also brought wireless charging which was so cool so we actually had wireless charging on this device which was awesome we also had you know the landing port here and the lack of a headphone jack with a lot of people didn't like but the glass back made things feel so much more premium we had you know the IP certification still on this phone too. The dual camera setup was improved a little bit. And we also got 4K at 60 on the back here. These two iPhones could do 4K at 30. The 6S Plus brought 4K in general, but now we had 4K at 60 on here too, which was really, really awesome. So when I look at basically the outside and the back side of both these phones, or all three of these, there were a lot of differences. And each iPhone brought a lot of different things, I would definitely say. These were all pretty much the most premium iPhones for these two years. These were the most expensive iPhones. But then Apple went ahead and switched and made this one basically the mid-tier iPhone of that year. The iPhone 8 Plus was the mid-tier iPhone. There was no like, you know, saying that it wasn't supposed to be a flagship, but since the iPhone 10 kind of took that $1,000 price tag, it kind of put this one in a weird situation where it's kind of like the middle child, whereas these two years, these were like the main focus of that time. Now looking on the front of all these devices, there was a lot of overlap. You know, I definitely do think between each iteration, there was kind of like less and less things done from one generation to the other. They all had Touch ID 2 on the bottom, but there were some differences with these. The iPhone 6S Plus had a physical button that you could click in. The 7 Plus, on the other hand, did not. It had a, you know, virtual button technically in a way. And so did the 8 Plus. Although the 8 Plus, you know, looks like it's a clicking button that clicks in, it's not a physical button. It's just a vibration motor. And that originated with the 7 Plus. With the 6S Plus, that 5.5 inch panel was really good. You know, I thought it was really, really good at the time back in 2015. And even nowadays, since the 8 Plus is still kind of relevant, it doesn't really look like a super dated device. It doesn't look ugly or anything. And it's still supported with software too, which is really cool. But the 6S Plus, in my opinion, is one of the most important iPhones, mostly because it brought that two gigabytes of extra RAM. And it also had an extra, you know, couple of years of, you know, software updates from the iPhone 6, which is so crazy. We personally weren't expecting this device to last as long as it did, and it's super crazy that it actually ended up getting as many software updates as it did at that time. So this is a very interesting iPhone there. I used this phone for about, I think like nine months or so, before I did go ahead and switch over to my iPhone 7 Plus, and I had a really good time with this device too. It wasn't this one in particular, but the 7 Plus has a lot of cool things too. This phone brought Force Touch. This phone brought Force Touch essentially in the home button as a vibration motor. 
the front cameras were a little bit of improvement and we did have that extra gigabyte of RAM which was really nice. So those things in and of itself really kind of made me feel a little bit better about this device and I was actually kind of happy about it. But then with the iPhone 8 Plus, this phone in my opinion is still extremely relevant and it's weird because less and less people talk about it every single year which is what happens with every new device but I'm still so shocked about how good of a device this is in 2022. This device, although it isn't perfect, I mean this panel still looks good although the panel on all these other ones look good too, this iPhone actually brought True Tone, which was really cool. So True Tone essentially helps warm the display of the iPhone 8 Plus, and although it's not an OLED display, it makes it look and feel a little bit better. So I think when you look at it in that standpoint, this is actually a really, really cool thing that Apple did at this time was bring this kind of warmingness to the display, whatever that is, to an IPS panel. And it made this display look and feel so much better than really all the previous iPhones before. Even though they were the exact same resolution, you were kind of getting a better looking panel here that looked, it wasn't, it didn't look like an OLED panel, but it looked almost like it was looking like an OLED panel, which was very, very interesting from an IPS panel. So that's another really big thing with this device too. So when I look at all three of these iPhones, I will definitely tell you there's really only two I would kind of recommend. I would not really recommend buying an iPhone 6S Plus anymore. Although this iPhone had its time and I think it was a really important iPhone, one of the most important iPhones that ever came out, I don't think this iPhone is worth it anymore. I think there's really no reason why somebody should go and pick up this device. I think it would make more sense to pick up something like an iPhone 7 Plus, which is right here. This device, although it's not perfect either and it definitely has a more dated design, something like the iPhone 7 Plus nowadays makes a lot more sense to me. This device is still supported with software and it's still going to get support with software for the next, who knows, maybe a few generations. Again, I'm not 100% too sure, but I'm definitely curious to see what Apple is going to be doing with, you know, the SE lineup because if they're going to take the approach of the iPhone 8 Plus and S7 Plus and make that design recurrent again, I'm not too sure what's going to happen there. But with the 7 Plus, it's still supported with software. Apps are still going to be working on this thing as they're going to be working on the 6S Plus for a few more for a few more years as well, but the performance gap between these two is fairly large. But finally, with the iPhone 8 Plus, I think this iPhone is also still worth it. And I will tell you though, the 8 Plus is in a more weird situation than the 7 Plus, because the 7 Plus is substantially cheaper in the used market than the 8 Plus. The 8 Plus is almost, I mean, it's around the same price as the iPhone 10 right now in the used market. So because of that, it just makes more sense to buy something like an iPhone 10 if you're going to go for the iPhone 8 Plus. So if you have to go lower end, go for the 7 Plus, but the iPhone 8 Plus is still here to stay. It's going to be getting just as long supports you know, in terms of software than the iPhone 10. So if you're somebody who needs to go and pick up one of these devices and move on with their life, well, going for the iPhone 8 Plus is probably the better way to go for a majority of you. This device is going to last longer. It's the best one out of all three. You're getting IP certification. You're getting a newer chipset. You're getting better build quality glass on the back, which is so nice. But I will tell you, I wouldn't recommend buying this one at all. The 7 Plus is, if you're on an extreme budget, go for this one. The 8 Plus, I think, is still a good phone, and it's definitely a better one here. But I would recommend going for the iPhone 10 if you have the money. If you go above the iPhone 10, that's even better. But I would definitely say stick with the iPhone 8 Plus. That probably is the one that makes a lot more sense to me. But that's kind of how all three of these phones compare in 2022. If you have any other thoughts or questions, I'll let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.